welcome back to another video. We are creating a grappling hook mechanic inside Construct 3. The last video we got our grappling target set up. We can launch it and stop it with collisions. So in this video we're going to work a little more on what to do with the vine once we create the grappling hook itself. But first I want to set up some groups here to get a little more organized now that we have a few blocks of code. So let's right click and add a group. And I'm gonna call this grappling launch. We can put this whole block and its sub events into that one. And I'm gonna close it up for just a second. Then I'm gonna create another group and I'll call this one grapple collisions. And we can put this one in that group. And I'll open this one back up just so we can see what is in there. All right, I'm gonna play this again. And this is what we set up in the last video where we throw this target and when it collides, it creates the vine. But if I throw it off screen, it just keeps going into space. It never stops, it never gets destroyed, it just keeps flowing forever and ever and ever. So let's exit out of that go into our grapple collisions group and add an event and let's go grab our target and I want to know when it has traveled too far so let's go down to our bullet behaviors and I want to compare the distance traveled so hit next and I want to know when it is greater than or equal to let's say 500 pixels so it can go pretty far, but I don't want it to go too far because if we are on the other side of the level over here, I don't want it to be able to connect over here because that's just too far. But if our player is, let's say right here, uh, I think it could probably reach to about up here and it'd still be okay. But up here might be a little too far. So 500 pixels is gonna be somewhere in this area as far as distance goes. Back on our event sheet, let's add an action and go into our grapple target and let's disable the bullet. So set enable to disabled. And then we can go back into our target again and type in destroy and just destroy the object altogether. Now remember before when I said I don't want it to connect with the floor, but right now, it goes through the floor because there's no code set up for the floor and it connects with the collision underneath it. I don't want to give it the chance to do that. I want the floor to stop it. Up here with our distance traveled check in this empty gray space below it, we can double click on it to add another condition. And I want to go grab that target again. And I want to come down to collisions and check for that collision with another object. And that object is going to be the floor. We'll hit done. So now what it says, if it collides with the floor and it has traveled more than 500 pixels uh, to do this, but I want either one of these to be true. So let's right click on the block of code and say make or block. So now if we collide with the floor or the target travels 500 pixels or more, then we'll disable it and then destroy it. Let's see what that looks like. If I shoot it at the floor, it destroys the target. And the target did not connect with our other collision, so the vine never gets created. Up here, it gets created. If I shoot it down here, that vine stays there because we never ran the code to change the vine's position. So. Looks good. Okay, let's bring a new element into the game. Let's go over to the layout. And in our project panel, I'm just going to clone our object grab vine. So let's right click on that object and go down to clone. And that gives us grab vine 2. Let's go ahead and rename that to obj underscore grab angle. Double click to go into the animation. And I am going to change its color to a nice bright red so we can see it in the editor. But we aren't going to be able to see it in game. We will while we're testing it, but we'll eventually make it invisible. 
So everything else should be the same. It should be the same size and have the origin point in the same area. We can exit out of that. And I'm gonna grab both of these and move them into our OBJ folder. And then back in our event sheet, I wanna do the same thing we did with our grab vine. When our target collides, we set the position to the target. So now that our vine has a new position, I want to move our angle to the position of wherever our grab vine moves to. But let's add an action right underneath that and go into our OBJ file and grab our new grab angle that we just created. And I want to set the position to another object and that is going to be our grab vine. The image point is going to be zero. And then I want to set the angle of our grab angle object. Let's add an action. Let's go get that object. I want to set the angle toward a position. Hit next. The X is going to be where our player threw the grappling from, the target. Let's grab that OBJ player dot image point X in parentheses one. So that's gonna be that image point on the end of his hand that we created. So let's tab down and do the same thing for Y, OBJ player dot image point Y. And that's gonna be image point one. Let's go into the layout and let's play this. We're not getting the angle object. So let's close out of that. Let's go back to the layout. It looks like we have our vine object. Oh, that's what happened. We cloned the vine object, but we never put an instance of the angle object onto the layout because we cloned it here in the project panel. So let's grab an instance of the grapple angle object onto our layout. Okay, so now we have both of them. They exist because we're not creating them in the code. We're just changing their position. Play that. And there we go. The angle is shooting towards us. And if I go over here, it shoots straight down. Go over here. It's always going to be angling towards us. So after we set the angle of that one, I want to change how long our vine is. I want the vine, the grappling vine, to go all the way from the target to our player's hand. So let's add an action and go into our objects folder, grab the vine, and we want to set the width. And to calculate the width, we're going to use another expression, and that is going to be called distance. And just like the other one we used, angle, this one also needs some information in between parentheses. So the first parentheses, and it shows us we need an x1, y1, an x2, y2. So the first coordinates we're going to calculate the distance from is going to be our player. So obj player dot image point x, we're gonna grab that point again, and that's going to be one, then separate it with a comma, and obj, get that player object again, dot image point y, of one, another comma, and now we wanna go from that image point of our player object to where our vine is. We can type in our vine object, obj underscore grab vine, and that's gonna be dot x for the x coordinate, then comma, and obj vine dot y, and in parentheses. So let's hit done, and let's see what that looks like and I click, and you see it's much longer than it was before. That's because it's calculating the distance from the X and Y origin of the vine to the image point here. So if I do it here, see it's shorter. And if I do it out here, then it's really long because the distance is much longer between these two points. And if I jump up, then it's really short. 
Okay, here comes the fun part. Let's go over to our layout and I'm gonna zoom into our vine. And I'm gonna set the angle to 90. The origin point is here at the top and the vine just hangs down from there. Now with that selected in the properties, I'm going to edit behaviors, add a new behavior, and we're going to give it the sign behavior. And this says adjust an object's position, size, angle, or other properties on an oscillating sine wave. Let's add that and let's change some properties. So we want it to swing back and forth, which means we want to change its angle. So if I come up here and I change the angle up and down, it swings. So that's what I want. So instead of horizontal movement, let's change that to angle. And the wave we want is the sine wave. So it goes from one point to another and back. So it just goes back and forth between two values. If you have the free version, I don't believe you're able to preview, but you can see what it does on my screen. If we preview, you see that it takes four seconds to complete a full wave. So it goes here, then one, two, three, four. I want to speed that up. I'm going to go say 2.5. And then the magnitude, this is going to change in code, but I want to give it a default value so that this is going to be the max swinging value. And the speed and everything else, a lot of this is going to change in the code, but I want to give you an idea what the sign behavior does to the vine. Okay, let's go back to our event sheet. And for this block of code right here, let's highlight the whole thing and press B on the keyboard to create a sub event because I want to do some things with the sign behavior, but I only want that to happen after we have made contact with the collision target and all this other stuff takes place. So in our sub event, we don't really need a condition because we're going to use this condition. We just don't want any of this to happen until all of this has taken place. So let's add an action to this and let's go grab the vine. And we want to go down to the sign properties and I'm going to change the cycle position. And this says set the progress through one cycle. And I want to start at a different part of the process than at the beginning each time. So I'm actually going to put it at 0.25. I also want to turn the sign on and off when all this happens. So let's add another action and go grab our vine again. Go down to our sign behaviors and let's set enabled to enable. And then all the way at the top in our initialize when the game is first loaded in our on start of layout event, I want to set it to disable. So let's add an action, go get our vine and go down to sign, enable, set it to disable. So it's not going to be swinging when we start the game, but when we make contact, then it can start swinging. So let's look at that. So I'm going to shoot it and it starts swinging. Let's go back up to the initialize group. In addition to setting the sign enabled, I want to set our vine to be invisible. Go to our vine object. I'm going to type in visible. We want to set it to invisible at the beginning. And then once this starts to take place, we can come down here in this sub event and set it to visible. Let's try that out. Now we can't see the vine anyways because it's off the screen. So everything is still working exactly how it should be. Okay. We have set up our grapple target to launch, connect, and then we can create the vine and get it swinging. 
Coming up next, we will start giving our player the function to grab onto the vine and swing with the vine. So I'm going to stop this one here, and I will see you in the next video, and don't forget to save.